All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another awesome episode of Building Character. I know that we were going to have uh, Kurt here today, but he had some uh, it, things he had, that came up, so we're going to just go back to our old faithful. We're going to do another Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition build. Uh, my name is Rick, I'm your host, and I'll be here this whole hour. And today, unlike some of the ones we've done in the past, uh, we're going to build a bard. I just, for some reason, feel like a bard is going to be a lot of fun, and I want to kind of incorporate it into the story we've already built, or into the characters we've already built in our 5th edition here. And that would be, uh, we have Gazira, who is our, you know, um, our monk, half-orc monk. But now we're going to build a bard that's going to be a companion to Gazira. And we'll come up with the whole story as how they met and everything. So let me real quick do a refresh here so I can get us on, find out who's all watching us today. <clears throat> then we'll get to the dice rolling. Actually, let me just dump all these out real quick. There we go. There's a rogue D10 in there. Always that rogue D10. All right. Let's see here. Boom. Who's all in there? Who's all watching us today? Sweet. Two of you. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Building a bard. We're going to put one together, uh, get some shares in there, and we're going to start off, as we always do, we got to get those stats rolled up. So, like we are, hey, what's up, Keith? Uh, Standard point buy is always fun to, to do when we when you know, when building characters. It makes it a lot more balanced and uh, easy. But uh, we're going to do dice roll as we always do for these fun characters we're building for these for our fifth edition character builds. Uh, funny thing is, uh, all the characters we're building for the characters we're building for them, and they're all going to be probably I don't know publishers of game material you guys are familiar with. So stay tuned for that. Um, <clears throat> or work for publishing companies. And they may not all work for, uh, for Watsi, they may work for other companies. Uh, maybe I'll drop some hints later. So the reason I wanted to do a bard build today is because for a lot of you that know, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Tales of the Yawning Portal came out. And I know it, you're thinking, what does that have to do with bards? This is what I think it has to do with bards. Bards are the storytellers, the ones that make people into legends. And this book is filled with legendary events, uh, uh, you know, adventures from uh, G1, 2, and 3 against the giants. You've got the Forge of Fury, Son of Citadel, the Hidden Shine, Shrine of uh, Tomakan, the White Plume Mountain, D D Dead and Thay, Tomb of Horrors, and a bunch of cool magic items and stuff. So this is a book filled with legendary uh, events that bards would have spoke about. So that's kind of why I'm kind of like, ah, oh, bards sound cool. <clears throat> all right, hey Michael, thanks for joining us. Hey Clayton, good afternoon. So, all right, so we're gonna get into it. Let's let's roll some stats. Hey, what's up, Aaron? Here we go. First stat. What do we got here? That's not bad. It's 17 right off the bat. I'll take it. So 17. Our next stat, we have six to roll. Dropping it down the dice tower here. Ooh, oh no, three, four, five. We got a five. That's not good. But you know what? We don't re-roll ones or twos when we do this because sometimes you just can't. You gotta, you gotta go with what you get. All right, so here we go. That's all right. Next roll. Three, eight, so a nine. This bard literally is going to be the most sickly of sick. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so have you guys played bards before? Who, hears, who here likes playing bards? Oh, there we go, 16. That's what I'm talking about. Got two more stats to go. Rolling them down my dice tower here. Playing. This is the, uh, I got this from Geek Chic at, uh, I wanna say it was a New York Comic Con a couple years ago. They were set up there, and I was like, ah, I gotta get something. Can't afford a table. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, there we go. Another 17. So this character is rounding out to be pretty awesome. That five, though, that five is gonna be the worst. But could could uh, come out to be make him quite comical. So, hey, Jamie, awesome. 
a Valor Bard. That's a cool, cool one. Sometimes the dice gods aren't kind. You're right, Billy. They are not kind at all. All right, here we go. Last, last stat. Let's hope for some big money, no whammies. And drop them. Shoot. Not upset. Three 17s, a 16, a 9, and a 5. Where are we putting them, ladies and gentlemen? I know for a fact we're going to put one in Charisma. So let's go ahead and do that. 17 in Charisma. And based on what race we choose, these stats may mod. Lillian play, played a Drow Bard. That would be pretty cool. Five in Strength. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely, five in strength. All right, so we've we've hit our five. One of the 17s is gone. All right, what else we got here? Um, what do you guys think the nine in constitution? Maybe he's kind of a sickly bard? Would that, or, or just gets winded easy? <laughs> yeah, Kennedy, we are rolling up a bard today. Um, so we haven't chosen a race yet. So if you guys want to come up with a race for this one, that'd be great. Um, but I have a 16, a 17, a 17, and a nine to place. We put the five in strength and a 17 charisma already. Where should we put it? Uh, nine intelligence, woof. Nine intelligence. But bards, bards use spells, right? But, all right, here we go. Is that not gonna affect our bard's ability to use spells? I feel like it would be a hindrance to them. But, uh, yeah. So put the nine in a critical stat just to say you did. <laughs> um, here's the thing. I mean, we could bump it up to an 11 if we choose the right race. Uh, if we gave it, um, let's say, in, like, Constitution, and we make a, a Dwarven Bard, perchance. Um, but let's take a look. We, 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 that's one of the things we need to consider. What race do we want to play here? Go Dragonborn. Oof. There we go. Dragonborn would be kind of neat. Haven't made one of those yet. All right. Let's take a look here. We've got Halflings. Dragonborn. All right. What are their bonuses? Ability score increase. Your strength scores increase by two, and your charisma score increases by one. Wow, that's not bad. And for a bard, that'd be great. So if we did put the nine, let's say we put the, we got the five in there, so it's going to be a weekly uh, dragonborn. So it would go up to a seven. Still be getting some uh, horrible things. <laughs> oh, we're going to play that nine. It's going to be down there, but do we want to make it so it's modded out? Uh, Okay, so as far as the races you guys are naming off, we got you're talking about Kenkus and Goliaths, stuff like that. I'm only going to use I'm only using the uh, races that are available in the primary player's handbook. So I know that's limiting, but uh, it also is you know because it's kind of introductory for some people. I know a lot of you guys already play. So uh, do we want to go Dragonborn or is there another? Find me a weak Dragonborn. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking a, a, a weak Dragonborn would be kind of cool. Uh, let's see, Michael says half-elf. We've had quite a few interesting bard, bards in here. No to a slad bard. A slad bard would be awesome. You know, the frog salamander things. Nolan, that's okay if you've never played. I mean, I, but I, I, I feel like you have. Have you, Nolan? No. Um, so I'm going to put uh, 17 in Constitution. All right, so we knocked one of those 17s. All right, our intelligence. Do we want to make him kind of a simple bard? Granted, he let's say he knows how to play an instrument. Uh, again, but the race that we choose will mod. Dragon Bard Z. <laughs> uh, nice. Critical Roll is a lot of fun. I, I enjoy watching those guys over there. Uh, Matt Mercer is phenomenal. Um, all right, so we're making a bard. Um, you know what? I'm going to do it because you guys already mentioned it. And I know bards need that intelligence, but we're going to hit that bard with a, you know, what? I also want to say wisdom instead. Maybe he's just not, 
He may be smart, relatively smart, but he just doesn't have the, that street cred, like the wisdom that would be necessary to do certain things. What do you guys think? Five wisdom? Oh, Jesus, Casey. Five wisdom or nine wisdom? Do I make him kind of weak, weakish? All right, we're going to go Dragonborn. Everybody wants Dragonborn. All right. So that will actually give him a seven strength if we leave the five there. So let's do that. We'll leave the five there, but now because of his uh, the Dragonborn mods, he would become a seven strength. Let me just go back to that page real quick with the Dragonborns. All right. So... Strength by two, charisma by one. So we'll give him a seven strength. That's gone. Uh, those two 17s are gone. Uh, intelligence of nine, or wisdom of nine. Now his charisma goes up to 18 because of the modification. Is that right? Charisma score by increases by one. All right. So that leaves us with the 16 and 17. So... I'm thinking 16, uh, 17 decks, 16 intelligence. What do you guys think? Yeah, wisdom. He's reckless. That's what I'm thinking too. So 16 decks, or 17 decks to give him a better thing, uh, and 16 intelligence. There we go. We got our stats. All right. Give him 17 strength. I... <laughs> All right, so seven strength. This is a weak, I'm almost thinking like this Dragonborn is uh, maybe related to the dragon from um, Mulan. What was that? What was that dragon's name? Uh, Mushu. Mushu? Mushu, was that his name? Kind of a thin, wispy dragon. So there we go. That's a cool, those are, that's a pretty cool rundown of some stats there. Uh, Ninja Dragonborn, all right, so Mushu, that's right, Brandon, thank you. Uh, so here we go. We got a Dragonborn Bard, who's a, kind of weak, weakly, but he's pretty smart, handsome, or, or beautiful, because um, we also have to come up with a ray, uh, sex for this character. All right, so I'm going to swing over to, let's see, alignments here. We got <clears throat> Dragonborn 10 to extremes making a conscious choice from one side or the other in the cosmic war between good and evil, represented by Bahamut and Tiamat, respectively. Most Dragonborn are good, but those who side with Tiamat can be terrible villains. All right, this is absolutely a good character because this is going to be a companion character to Gazira, our half-orc monk that we made uh, in the very first episode. So, um, base walking speed, we'll just write that in real quick, 30 feet. What do you guys think? Uh, neutral good? Chaotic good? What are we looking at here? Mushu must rock out. Yes. Mushraka. All right. Give him five charisma. He'd be Keith Richards. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. All right. So is this going to be a male or female uh, Dragonborn, everybody? What are, we, what are we making here today as far as the uh, sex of our Dragonborn? Chaotic good? I like chaotic good. Hey, Frank, welcome from Akron, Ohio. Everybody here, who's going to uh, gonna be at the um, Origins Game Fair in, in June? Because if you're gonna be there, I also will be there. And uh, I'm gonna have some opportunity to sit down and play some games with some people there, and it should be a lot of fun. So, <clears throat> what do we got here? What is our, our, our sex of our dragon board and bard? Female. We got another female. Female. Female Mushu type. <laughs> Have to be, if you're going to play bagpipes, it has to be female, uh, chaotic evil. Uh, okay, we can do that. Roll a die. Even it's male. Um, even male, odd female. All right, we'll do that. Let's pull back the, uh, the old dice tower here. Um, all right, so even on a d6 uh, is male, odd will be female. Here we go. Odd, we got a female, which is, which works perfectly because the the bar or the monkey is also female. So here we go. We'll write that down here. Female, we'll just write it female. So that means now, based on that intel, 
we need to come up with a name for our female bard. So pink hair then. <laughs> More than the gender, what race is it going to be? Oh, right, Marcos, the race has already been decided. It is a dragonborn. Uh, so the, it's a dragonborn bard. And um, first level, so we're making a first level dragonborn bard who is now, as we know, a female, but the stats are pretty funny. We rolled him in the dice tower at the beginning of the episode. Uh, strength is seven, dexterity 17, constitution 17, intelligence 16, wisdom is nine, and charisma is 18. So, yikes. <laughs> so if you guys have any names, we got Mushina. Uh, Josh Githen says Mallory. That's a great name for a dragonborn, Mallory. Um, Madeira Revenon. Slanto Flamebind. These are great names. Keith, Ava, those are great. Huyn. Huyn. W-H-Y-N-N. -N. That's a good one. Slanto. Hey, Dionysus. Thanks for joining us from Warp Clips. Uh, Shira. <laughs> Minerva. Minerva's a good one. Maya. There's a lot of M's here. You guys got a lot of M names dropping in. Fiona. Fiona. That's a... Madeira Revenon. Brandon. Ever, all right, you know what? Shira's a good name, too. Kelpfoot. Madeira Revenon. That's a good name. Let's go with Madeira Revenon. Is that Revlon? You like the makeup? Oh, I see, Brandon. Playing on Mushu. So Madeira... Where was that one at again? Annie Lennox. <laughs> all right, we're going to go with Madeira. Revenon. Or Rev Revenon. All right, that's a cool name, and uh, that'll be her her uh, common name. We'll have to come up with a, uh, a draconic version of that as well. I think it would be kind of neat. So we got Madeira Revenon. All right, but Mallory was a good choice too. There, Josh, our good our our buddies Josh Githens over there from Czech Game Edition, makers of. Uh, what is that game they make? Code names. No, no, that's not it. <laughs> Code names. <laughs> All right, so we have our female bard, dragonborn, named Madeira Revenon. Now, as far as bards go, let's get to that class real quick. Ugh, druids. No, I'm just kidding. I like druids. Druids are fine. All right. Cleric. All right, we got our bard here. Class features. Hit points. So hit dice, 1d8 per bard level. So we're going to give maximum hit points, 8 plus constitution bonus of 3, I believe. Right? I should probably write all that stuff in there. I'm pretty sure it's 3. Yep, so 3, 3, 18 is f bonus of four. What's that seven bonus? Oh, negative two to strength. Wisdom of nine, it gives them a negative one. And the 16 is also a plus three. All right, so, yikes. That is crazy. Um, so it's going to be eight, nine, 10, 11 hit points. First level bard was 11 hit points. That's not bad. Bronze or copper? Pseudo dragon. <laughs> Basically a pseudo dragon. Uh, so, what about Drakina's funny tongue since it's a bard? Hansa, that's a cool name, absolutely. Uh, but we, uh, we are going with Madeira Revenon, but all names still throw a bunch of names in there because I might come back and be like, I'm going to make a character based off this name because that name was freaking cool. Um, so, we have, uh, what do you mean by bronze or copper? Is that based on the type of dragon that it's related to? I haven't built a Dragonborn character before, so it's I'm learning some new new stuff here. You guys always give me some cool cool new stuff. Uh, da, 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 just reading on the uncommon races. <clears throat> Dra Draconians, Dragonborn traits, size, speed, Draconic ancestry. You, you have dra Draconic ancestry. Choose one type of dragon from the Draconic ancestry table. All right. Uh, because we do have that breath weapon. Um, I want it to be a goodly dragon, so here, here we go with uh, the draconic uh, back um, ancestry. We have brass, bronze, copper, gold, 
silver. Okay, so which one do you think our Madeira Revenon Dragon Dragonborn Bard uh, is going to be? Blue, blue is a good one. Blue is lightning, though. You know, and lightning is slick. Uh, Lucas says gold. We got a silver. We got copper is best. Why is copper best? Because of the acid, and does it have a like a? That's probably a splash effect, right? She's charismatic. She is charismatic. She has an 18 charisma. She's going to... Silver is the best bet. Silver, we got a couple silvers, bronze, gold, or silver. All right, so silver looks like the one that everybody's really liking. They have a cold breath weapon. That's a good breath weapon to have. Let's go. Madeira is a draconic descent silver, even though all of those uh, choices are good. So draconic ancestry is silver. All right. <clears throat> And damage resistance, resistance, you have resistance to the damage type associated with your draconic ancestry. So that's good. Uh, it has a resistance to cold, which would be an interesting thing. You can speak, read, and write common and draconic. Draconic is thought to be one of the oldest languages and is often used in the study of magic. The language, language sounds harsh to most other creatures and includes numerous hard consonants and sibilants. All right. They are tricksters and love people. Copper is the best. Those, I mean, you guys have, these are all great. It'd be fun to just to make a whole clan of uh, Dragonborn, actually build a, a clan that people would uh, interact with in a campaign. Based on, a lot of it just based on the names you guys are coming up with. They're rel ridiculously good. All right, let's find, we're going to go back to that, to that bard again. There we go. All right, so... Proficiencies, we're proficient in light armor, simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapier, short swords. Now what kind of, um, as far as a weapon that this bard, a dragonborn who isn't so strong but has a pretty decent dex, what do you think, uh, what kind of weapon do we want to have associated with Madeira Revenon? You guys have uh, some insight on that? <laughs> Kobold sidekick? Ah, I have a black dragonborn bard named Puff. I like it. Rapier is a, is a good one. Whip. Ooh, a whip. That would be a cool weapon. All right. So we have multiple rapier um, selections, but I'm going to go with the rapier and the whip. We're going to have whip and rapier. That's a great combo. And I'm just going to write whip in here as well. I mean, I can just imagine like a thin like dragon that has the rapier in, in close combat, but want, you know, for some distance slack, throwing that whip out, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's a fun, that, I mean, just visually, that's a cool combo. A party of five dragonborn, each of a different heritage. It's the ba Bahu fam. <laughs> you guys are awesome. You guys have some freaking amazing uh, concepts to throw on a character here. All right, so uh, others, Starting equipment, we get a rapier or a longsword or a simple weapon. I'm going to go with the rapier and the whip because I think that's kind of fun. Do we want to make it a diplomat pack or a entertainer's pack as far as the uh, initial gear? I'm all about the entertainer's pack, but maybe a diplomat pack might be something worth having as well. Look up grappling rules. I will, Dave, absolutely. Right. I'm, we're not, uh, when we make these characters, I mean, I understand the idea of that we want our characters to be survivable and everything in the game, but I want you guys to kind of focus a little bit on the story of a character. I know a whip only does one point of damage, but a whip visually, let's, I think, just is a, a phenomenal add-on. Uh, okay. Silvers are very diplomatic. We got Entertainer from one. Casey, thank you. Uh, Eric Larson says silver diplomat. Steve says silvers are very diplomatic. You know what? That's two, and I usually take the first two, and I like that right there. Um, like a hostess. If hostess, I mean, that's up to you guys. Do we want this character to be more of that storyteller bard who is trying to uh, uh, reach out to get more aid from different people, or the entertainer bard who... Uh, gets on the street corner, puts up the soapbox, and entertains for gold or, or coin as best they can. Um, remember that the companion that is with this character, the pregen we already did, 
is Gazira that everybody helped make, and Gazira is a half orc monk who um, also has an instrument. She plays a didgeridoo. Her quarter staff is a, is a staff flute and it is a didgeridoo. Uh, so kind of throw that in there as well. So we're all about the story. Um, there we go. So we'll do engaging in affairs of people. Diplomacy. I, yeah, let's do that. We're going to go with diplomacy. And we'll put that over here, the diplomacy pack under equipment. There we go. Diplomacy. I wish I knew some artists that could like sketch these characters out as we make them. I wonder if I know any artists. Maybe one. All right. So we went with Diplomacy Pack. That's actually really cool. Uh, again, when we're all thinking about that story background that we're trying to build here. All right, now, it says under the equipment, we can have a lute or any other musical instrument. Remember, Gazira, who is a monk, though, does play the didgeridoo, which we all know is one of the most epic instruments ever made by anybody ever. So what are your guys' thoughts on what kind of instrument does Madeira Revenon play? And if we have any bards in the building, if you want to come by and play us a couple tunes, that would be great. Harp, bag, <laughs> bagpipes, you guys are killing me. You know, all right, here we go. A pan flute, that's actually a really cool one. <laughs> the Spam Joe, <laughs> bagpipes, viola. All right, John Luther Davis, bagpipes. We got, uh, we've, bagpipes. All right, so I'm sitting here trying to imagine a dragonborn female who plays the bagpipes and is a companion to a half-orc monk who plays the didgeridoo. And I love it, and we're going to go with it. Bagpipes. All right, there we go. <laughs> bagpipes. Kind of reminds me of uh, one of those, like, Nordic or... Um, Scandinavian uh, folk metal bands, and there's always a frickin' uh, um, hurdy-gurdy and, and the bagpipes playing and stuff. So now instead of hurdy-gurdy, I'm seeing the, the didgeridoo and the, and the uh, uh, bagpipes. So it's going to be really funny. All right, so, <laughs> Casey, air guitar would have been great, but it, it, we, we, we go with uh, bagpipes. Uh, virtual guitar. So we got a lot of virtual guitar and, and air guitar in there too. I pretty much think every that would be like the secondary instrument and all characters can play that pretty well. So that's that's hilarious. Tambourine, that would have been funny too. Kind of like I said, that, that thin, wispy, like almost like a, a Chinese dragon with the with the tambourine sh shaking it over there while the didger is doing it, blah, 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 doing that thing. That's pretty funny. All right. <clears throat> so we have spell uh, spell casting with this bard. So at first level, they have bardic inspiration, which is really cool. And spell casting. All right, so spell casting for this character. <clears throat> it says, you know, two cantrips of your choice from the bard spell list. Um, you learn additional bard cantrips over your, of your choice at higher levels as shown in the cantrips known column of the bard. So cantrips known two, all right, because we are a bard, we only get two. So we gotta really choose which cantrips are always gonna, uh, a Miles Davis bard would be cool, Colin. That would be slick. Thunder wave. All right, so let's really quick jump onto the cantrips page. Um, just so we can get those out of the way as well. All right, here we go. Spells, bard spells, cantrips. Uh, we can choose between Blade Ward, Dancing Lights, Friends, Light, Mage Hand, Mending, Message, Minor Illusion, Prestidigitation, True Strike, or Vicious Mockery. Ooh, red studded leather does sound cool. Cantrips, Firebolt, Thunderwave, Mending. I can only pick two right now. Um, and Thunderwave isn't on the Bard's known spell list for cantrips. Is that a, 
that's a first level spell. So yeah, I can no four spells, two first. So yeah, we'll definitely take Thunder Wave for one of the first level spells, and I can no, I know spells of four. All right. All right, we'll take Thunder Wave. And what else did you guys say? It's a level one spell. Got it. Thanks, Josh and everybody. Uh, vicious Mockery is fun. Vicious Mockery, Mockery. Okay, we'll take Vicious Mockery. Mockery. All right. And what was the other um, cantrip we were looking at? <laughs> Scalin had killed a few with that. That's pretty funny. Uh, friends. Friends is a good one. We'll take Friends as well. All right, hey Vaughn, we're, we are playing. We're putting together a bard who is a dragonborn uh, female named Madura Revenant, companion to our uh, character Gazira that we already made, who is the half orc monk. Uh, Madura's stats are: she has a strength of seven, a dexterity seventeen, constitution seventeen, consti or, uh, intelligence sixteen, wisdom of nine, and a charisma of eighteen. Uh, all the dice were rolled in the tower at the beginning, so those weren't fudged. So you guys all can be like. Oh, that's a pretty stacked character, except for that seven and nine, because the seven was a five, but because we took Dragonborn, gave it a, 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 a seven. Um, Mage Hand is always good. I think Mage Hand will be one that we'll take up after, like as this character advances, maybe. But Friends is the one that a lot of you have said already, so we'll take that. She is a diplomat, so Friends is a good one. Um, now, onto the first level spells that are known. I did like Thunder Wave, so we took that. What are some other, who else has their books open? Anybody else got their books with them? Because uh, then you can give me some insight as to some other first level spells if you just go to page 207 uh, in the player's handbook. So some first level spells, we're back there. Mending is also pretty cool. Um, Druk, thank you. Uh, fairy Fire is a good spell. Fairy Fire is a great spell. And I will take it, Fairy Fire. So we have two more first level spells that are known. Um, so. We can take Comprehend Languages, Charm Person. That's always good for a bard, yeah. Uh, illusionary Script, Silent Image, Sleep. I mean, for combat purposes, sleep at first level is pretty important. What do you guys think? Uh, Dissonant Whispers, Cure Healing Word, Cure Wounds. Oh, yeah, man, that's a good one, too. What's Dissonant Whispers? Okay, Dissonant Whispers, I see it there. I haven't used that spell yet. Um, so, okay, so my thoughts are, and you guys can absolutely chime in, for the other two first level spells that uh, our bard knows, I'm thinking sleep and cure wounds. You guys thumbs up on that if you think that's a good one? Put them to sleep with the bagpipes. <laughs> absolutely. Charm, diplomat, healing. Yeah, I, you're right. Cure wounds is always a good one. So we will take cure wounds there. And now we've got... Um, charm person as a possibility. Dissonant whispers, good damage. Okay, well, all right. D you guys are saying uh, dissonant whispers, so well, yeah, let's take that instead. Dissonant whispers. All right, so we have our spells for this character, and that I'm going to write the character name up here. Madeira Revenon, our first level bard dragonborn, who is super awesome. All right. We'll put that right there in front of us. Now, back to Bard. So we got our spells, spellcasting. Now, Bardic Inspiration, we've talked about that a little bit. Jack of all trades, that's as we go up in levels. All right, so we're basically done with the majority of our character as far as the stats and all that stuff that is necessary. Um, the things we do need to take a look at is, real quick, uh, saving throws come from Dexterity and Charisma. All right. <clears throat> so of our skills, we can choose any three skills. Um, what do you got? Sure, absolutely, Anders. Uh, recap on the spells are for the cantrips, because bards can only know two cantrips at first level. We took Vicious Mockery and Friends. And for the four, four spells we know as first level spells, Thunder Wave, Fairy Fire, Cure Wounds, and Dissonant Whispers. So that's actually a pretty cool uh, spell combination right there for that character. Now, again, now we're on to skills. We have three we can choose from. We are, um, choose any three skills. And we have really good decks, really good charisma. 
So what do you guys think? Deception is a charisma base. Uh, intimidation is a charisma base. What do you guys got going on here? I'm sorry, I can't stay. I got to go play. All right. Hey, Drew, go, go have fun. Play, play, play. Play lots of games. Uh, I, okay. Okay, let's do that. Let's do background. Let's come up with a background on our character. <clears throat> and I'm going to pull that over here real quick based on this. So our character's backstory. Um, again, this is your guys' build. I'm just here to write them down. Kind of, you know, as a group here, we're coming up some really cool stuff. Do we want to do the background using the personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws to help kind of mold that background? Or do you guys just want to free, free form it? Persuasion for diplomacy. I, yeah, I think deception and, and persuasion are always going to be good when we get to that. Um, and we also have to come up with that backstory, kind of how the Chi and Gazira become friends and meet. Hey, Emily, being a dragonborn, intimidation would work well. You're absolutely right. Uh, Steven is recommending we do a noble dragonborn. Being a silver uh, ancestry kind of fits that category uh, of nobility. So let's go to our... <clears throat> I'm going to put a card real quick here on page 53 so we can come back to it quickly enough. And I'm just going to go to personality and background. All right. Check the images of my work as, as comments to this post. All right, Sean, thank you very much. Seeking help for a ravaged homeland. Being, okay, that's a cool backstory. Noble school, but some DMs don't allow it. Uh, understandable, but I would be the DM of this one too, so I'm thinking that's not a bad little backstory for his character. All right, so let's go with personality and background. We already know the alignment of our character here. Inspiration, backgrounds. So let's take a look at the noble background here for the character. Noble. So this character would understand wealth, power, and privilege. And that kind of can be kind of a fun thing. A noble character or some people that have been born into uh, where they have pretty much all the necessities in life uh, can sometimes not be connected in some capacities. So that could almost account to why this character has a nine wisdom. You know, could be very smart, knows books, knows all that stuff. But when it comes to going out in the world, they're just lost. So... Uh, Jacob, I am not running Sword Coast, but it is going to be a Forgotten Realms game. I've actually uh, decided that we're going to, when all these characters are built for this, these are all pre-gen characters that you guys helped me build for a, uh, a one-shot game that's going to include some publishers. Uh, so uh, that'll be playing into the campaign uh, later on this year. Uh, we're working it all out, but we got to get these characters made. And it's fun, we have a monk and a bard, our two of the characters. Uh, thieves tools proficiency, proficiency like an urchin. A Charlton fits diplomat. That's true. Noble fits it better than Charlton. Okay. Um, <laughs> Anders is like criminal. <laughs> um, all right. So, Noble, uh, I think you guys have a, a, for those of you that said Noble, and for all the other ones, again, I'm just going to come back and probably make up some more characters, uh, so NPCs based off the names and traits you guys are throwing in there. So um, let's see here. We've got Noble. Do you guys want me to roll for the characteristics of like the personalities, uh, ideal, bond, and flush? Do you want us to roll that and then let that all meld into what our character will become? If you want me to roll, let me know. Hey, Brandon, thanks for joining us. Hopefully you come back. Make sure you guys share this on your, on your social media as well. Uh, share this video on your Facebook page or in groups that you think would be interested in uh, following along, helping us build this, this cool uh, campaign, basically, is what we're working on here. So <clears throat> see the rolls as I haven't seen how those work before. Okay, cool. I like that. We're going to just roll for it. Uh, pronunciation isn't it charlatan? Charlatan. Thanks, John. It might be charlatan. <laughs> All right, so uh, personality trait, our very first one. We're going to go ahead and roll. It's a D8, so let's grab that. And this is going to give us our back, our personality trait for our character. Here we go. Boom. A four. 
I take great pains to always look my best and follow the latest fashions. Kind of makes sense. Has a charisma of 18. I can see that a silver dragon, who also likes to meddle in the affairs of humans and the realms, might want to be associated with whatever the current fashions are. So that makes sense. So we'll write that in there. <clears throat> Take great pains to always look my best. <laughs> All right, so we've got our personality, personality traits. Uh, always look my best. All right, and okay, so we have one rolled up one. It's a Paris Hilton, you're absolutely right. Uh, um, so we got one rolled personality trait. If you guys want to throw out any other personality traits that would kind of fit this character, drop them, and we'll give this individual two personality traits. So we already know, kind of vain, wants to be part of the uh, trends uh, that are going on in the fashion world, uh, and always looks their best, as a silver dragonborn bard would want. So... Hey, Hansa, the next character that we will build is up to you guys. Um, because, like I said, we are, we're we're going to build a party of six. Uh, it's going to be a uh, one-shot sit-down event. And um, so, yeah, if you guys let me know what you want us to build. And as a community, we'll come together. You guys will help me build them for this event. It'll be a lot of fun to see who gets what and plays them uh, when we get a, our, everybody around the table. And that'll be also, <laughs> that'll be a lot of fun. All right, so character trait insists on pain and getting paid in silver coins and never gold. Ooh, that's actually pretty cool, too. Let's, all right, insists on being paid in silver, never gold. Never gold. All right. Gold just doesn't look good on the silver dragon. And she doesn't know much of the real world. She's unaware of much hate, of how much hate and main. And she was raised a noble, so she is kind of naive. Yeah, Matt, that is absolutely what I think. A great, uh, that's a great flaw. I'm going to write that down. Uh, doesn't know much of the real world. But we're also going to roll for a flaw as well. Doesn't uh, know much of the real world. That's a great one. All right, world. Aha. All right, so next we've got ideals. Um, it's a D6. If I do roll an ideal that is uh, kind of floats on the evil pl plane or platform there, I'm probably going to just pick one of your guys's because I don't, I don't want these characters to be evil. They, they, these are good. They are uh, uh, characters that want to do, do good in the, in the realms. So here we go, though, just to see what we do. A six. <clears throat> wow. Ideal is noble obligation. It is my duty to protect and care for the people beneath me. That's kind of a cool one. What do you guys think on that one? Well, she's a noble, she's the youngest of, and or closest to youngest of a large family and thus doesn't have much hope in inheriting anything, which is why she's trying to seek her fortune. Independence. Ooh, a psionicist. Ooh, Sean, that would be fun. But I don't know if psionics are, exist, uh, at least not in the, they don't exist in the, in the core book. Um, so... <laughs> when shopping, she is always right. Uh, that's a good one, too. So I think I like that uh, as far as the noble obligation. We'll take noble obligation. And always right. It can almost be a flaw um, in there. All right. What's it? Independence, I must prove that I can handle myself without the coddling of my family. And you know what? I'm also going to take that one. Uh, Jacob, you mentioned independence, and I think that's actually a really good one uh, to add in there. I like it. So we can give, doesn't need, and doesn't feel like she needs the uh, assistance of her family, but she feels like she does have a noble obligation to the people that are beneath her or um, that are like, the, her noble family kind of rules over, or people of less means. That's a good one. All right, so on to the next one, Bonds. Bonds are of D6 as well. And uh, we'll find out what this character's bond is and also throw out some ideas for Bonds yourselves so that we can choose uh, from those as well as an option. 
Oh, then you might want to switch out some of those warlock spells. Did I take take a couple warlock spells? It's a UA class, but psionics are myth mystics. Okay, possibly they are very bad. <laughs> okay. All right, um, I'll take a look at those, Steven, and, and I may have to modify them. However, I mean, maybe she does have a little bit of a dark side. I don't know. She is chaotic, uh, chaotic good, right? So we'll drop it here. Five on the bond. My loyalty is to my sovereign. My loyalty to my sovereign is unwavering. She, I mean, that kind of could fit in regards to her family. She is loyal to her family, but she feels like she needs her independence in, in that regard. Um, <laughs> a little short character. Uh, yeah. What do you guys think as far as, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sold on the bond of loyal to, uh, to her sovereign is unwavering. So what do you guys think her bond should be? Should it be to entertainment, to, to, uh, to, the, to the realm itself? Um, based on what we already have, takes great pains to always look good, uh, only will accept any payment uh, that she gets in the form of silver, as far as for probably for work. I mean, if, if uh, someone gives her copper or, or something like that, she may hand it off to her companions because maybe she doesn't want to carry it, but never gold or platinum. She wants to heal the world with music, the common man. But don't just choose it. Fits with her naivety. All right. She wants to heal. Oh, you know what? You're absolutely right. That does kind of fit the naivety of the character. Uh, want, so we'll go with that as a bond. She wants to heal the world with music. That's a good one. Heal the world. And she chose, and, and you guys chose bagpipes to heal the world. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, there we go. Wants to heal the world through music. Her flaw is uh, she doesn't know much about the world. So that's actually really kind of cool. That whole naivety uh, uh, sense is, is really cool. But let's take a look at what other flaws we may have gotten here. It's another D6. Let's just kind of see what maybe might be a cool add in there as well. Four, I have an insatiable desire for carnal pleasures. Wow, uh, what do you guys think of that? She, she's, she's got an insatiable desire for carnal pleasures. Do we wanna add that as a flaw as well? <clears throat> Anders is like, I just felt like listening to the Rolling Stones, you got the silver. All right, there is, yeah, freak in the sheets. All right, we're gonna take it, all right has an insatiable desire for carnal pleasures. That's kind of an interesting thing too. And technically can also go along the lines of the whole um, naivety thing too, is heal the world, not knowing much about the world, Feels like that's also possibly a, a path to healing as well. So that's kind of interesting. And like uh, Matt and Steven are all saying, that's kind of dark. And where she learned the warlock stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that actually, very cool. Ever slept with a silver dragon before? You got the silver, got silvered. <laughs> all right, read King Killer Chronicles. The main character is very much Mage Bard and the noble loyalty to the whole of his people, not a crown or group leader. That's actually very cool, Sean. Um, uh, that's actually, I think that would be a really cool, uh, like, community to put together uh, in regards to this whole, whole thing, that she comes from a larger community um, and doesn't necessarily pay her, you know, has, has a connection to an individual, but to a whole. That's actually pretty cool. All right, so we've got our background. We've got our personality traits, ideals, bonds, flaws. All the other stuff there. Now, based on those flaws, bonds, ideals, let's pick our three skills. I think that uh, performance has got to be one, you know, because it is charisma, a charisma-based one. We've got to go with performance, all right? And then some of you had mentioned before, deception 
intimidation as options. Uh, but when you think about deception and intimidation, you can always, because of such a high charisma, they're both charisma based, you can absolutely use it as a role playing tool. Deception, persuasion, performance. And yes, you're right, they do give skills and I am going to pick those uh, and throw those in there as well. But we're gonna take uh, deception and intimidation, was that the other one? Or, pers or persuasion? Persuasion and performance. There we go, that absolutely fits our character. I, hey, what's up Francisco? Persuasion, you're right, persuasion. I took persuasion and deception. Deception, I think, is a good one for, uh, you know, again, she may have to use some sort of lies to get through what she needs to do. <laughs> Persuasion comes with noble. Okay, so noble, skill, prevention, history. You also get history and persuasion. So, all right, so because we already have history and persuasion based on the on the background, uh, one type of gaming set, one of your choice languages, we get to add another language, a set of fine clothes, a signet ring, a scroll of pedigree, and a purse containing 25 gold. All right, but we're gonna go with the equivalent of silver and gold right there. Um, so we already know that we speak common and draconic. What would be that bonus language for being noble? What do you guys think? And that also means we get to pick one more uh, uh, skill here, and we need to pick that. Ooh, look at her to be a bard spy. That grants you a free pick. Okay. Elven? Cthulian. <laughs> Elvish, all right. Got a lot of Elvish popping up there, so we'll pick Elvish. Or, there we go. So there you go. Common, Draconic, and Elvish. That's kind of interesting. So let's see here. We've got... we got one more skill we can pick, everybody. And... I'm kind of thinking, again, it's a bard. Do you want to go with Arcana, maybe? I don't know. That's a, I mean, Arcana would be a great one, I think, to choose just because of the magic potentials there. Uh, through study and stuff, maybe she did have a, a proclivity towards... Or, or perception, you're right. <laughs> perception is always good, too. Um, and it, you guys are dropping. Wait, not perception? Honestly, Arcana. Sleight of hand. Man, you guys are dropping some good ones here. I mean, the bard has so many things going on. All right, we got lots of perception, lots of arcana, but uh, perception is very useful. You're right. I feel that because perception is wisdom, uh, the thing is, this character has a nine wisdom, so perception is already going to be junked up uh, with a negative one. So I'm, uh, I think Arcana would be more, more right. And I think that by not taking perception, it does lead, lend to the characters, uh, you know, not knowing a lot about the world. So it, they may be eyes open all the time, looking at all the cool stuff that they're not familiar with, having been housed in the noble uh, fashion, and now they're out in the world. So they're going to be wise, wide open. But in that, sometimes they can miss even then miss some things that might uh, uh, a more worldly person might see. Acrobatics. Animal handling. <laughs> oh, you're right. does have a high dex and could use a dex skill, um, which is stealth uh, and acrobatics. So, But we're going to go with Arcana for now. Uh, maybe as we m model up this character a little bit more, things will change up. She can fix with Fix it with alertness at fourth level. Truth. All right. Make her a hard warlock in the future. Good. Gee, Steve. That's great. <laughs> I mean, it could happen. You never know. Or Like I said, we're making these first level characters just to kind of see where they're going to land. Uh, it's tricky on that character. She seems more living for the moment. You're right. She gets jack of all trades at level two. Truth. Steven Tosh Bard. All right, so yes, there we go. We have our Bard, Madeira Revenon. She is a dragonborn bard of silver draconic ancestry, which is really cool. Her stats are seven strength, 17 dex, 17 con, 16 intelligence, nine wisdom, 18 charisma, 
Her personality is she takes great pride in always looking her best and keeping up with the latest fashions. Uh, she's interested, her interest is in, is in silver for pay, so she never accepts anything else but silver. Kind of a neat little uh, character, almost a trait but flaw. Um, she has a noble obligation, and but yet seeks her independence in being out there in the world. That are her, those are her ideals. Her bonds is she wants to heal the world through her music. Um, her flaws is that she doesn't because she doesn't know much of the world. She's oblivious to a lot of the things that go on in the real world. She doesn't know a lot about the the hate and the and the the violence. And she also, but because of certain things. She has an insatiable desire for carnal pleasures. Uh, that was a die roll, not a, just a pick. Um, can speak common, draconic, and elvish. She, her weapon is a rapier, and she also has a whip. I thought that was a cool, cool little suggestion there. And then uh, we, we never really came up with the armor. Someone did mention some red leather um, armor, which could kind of fit that whole, like red spiked leather kind of fits that whole like carnal pleasures thing. So maybe when she does go out into the world of adventure, that is the armor of choice. What do you guys think? Yeah, right, imagine her using her cold breath weapon while, while uh, doing that. Uh, her AC uh, right now is, without any armor, is 13. So that's not bad because of her dex. Had a beer truck. Nolan, bring that beer truck here. Gold Dragon Wormling Studded Leather Armor. The Scarlet Piper. That's a cool, cool, cool thing as a, a, as a title, Jordan. Anders Gold Dragon Wormling Studded Leather Armor. All right, so I think if we pick leather armor, let's find that real quick, just for purposes of uh, any penalties we might get. All right. Just got to get there. Here we go. Light armor, studded leather, 12 plus dex modifier, which give which would give her a 15 armor class. So red studded leather. I think that is a great one. We'll take it. Armor class 15. Red studded leather. All right. There we have it. We have a character. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I really appreciate you guys joining in for this. And remember, we have four more characters we need to make that are going to be a part of a one-shot campaign or adventure that will take place in the future. Um, so come up with some ideas. Shoot me some messages in the ch in the on the chat or in the uh, 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 on the page itself and say, hey, here's another character I think you guys should make. So we have two female characters as part of the party of six that's going to uh, be a part of this game. Uh, so I need you guys to come up with four more cool ideas and then we'll actually sit down and make them on few future episodes. So this has been Building Character here in Timonium, Maryland at the Game Trade Media Comic Wow Studios. And I've been your host, Rick. Tomorrow's International Tabletop Day, so go to your local game store. Make sure that if you guys don't have any of these books, you go to your game stores and get them, become part of the community, and uh, play in all the games at the store uh, that is nearest you. And like I said, I'll see you guys next Tuesday for some more painting happy little minis. So if you guys are wanting to watch some miniature painting, make sure you tune in for that as well. Have a great weekend. Signing off. <laughs>